Hello, this is a short video to show why I believe the concept of the electric universe is just nonsense. This is one of many reasons, but this is a very short analysis that anyone can follow and conclude as I have that uh, the forces that hold the Earth in orbit about the Sun is indeed gravitational and has nothing to do with electrostatic forces. Now, let's assume that we have an Earth and a Sun. We have two spheres of unequal radius. The capacitance between two spheres of unequal radius separated by distance d from center to center is given by this equation that the capacitance in farads is 4 pi epsilon 0 the permittivity of free space between the sphere surfaces times a which is the radius of the smaller sphere divided by 1 minus m, where m is given as a over d minus b, d being the center to center separation, and b the radius of the larger sphere. Now, for the Earth-Sun system, a is the radius of the Earth, 6,371 kilometers, b is the radius of the Sun, 695,950 kilometers, the separation between the Earth and the Sun is one astronomical unit, which is 1.49 or 149.6 million kilometers. And using these numbers, our um, uh, this value here, a over one minus m. It turns out to be, once you put the numbers in and compute, 6,371.3 kilometers. Now, the analysis is fairly straightforward. And what we'll do is using these numbers now, putting into this equation, 4 pi... <coughs> Uh, E0, uh, E0 uh, is a permittivity of free space. Just assume that we either have air or vacuum between the uh, Earth and the Sun. So the permittivity of air and free space are pretty much equal to one another. E0 is 8.859 times 10 to the minus 12th. <coughs> Uh, uh, picofarad or farads per meter or 8.859 picofarads per meter that is a permittivity of free space put the numbers in and we get a capacitance between the earth and the sun as 708.9 microfarads that is the capacitance between the earth and the sun now, we will compute the voltage between the Earth and the Sun, assuming that the electric field intensity that would exist between the Earth and the Sun is of the same uh, intensity and magnitude as to cause the atmosphere of the Earth to break down. Okay. A breakdown of air occurs if there's a very strong electric field intensity, it will break down the air. That's what you see as arcing when you walk across a room and try and touch something metal that might be grounded and you draw an arc. You are breaking down the air because the electric field intensity due to charge separation of you and that object has created an electric field that breaks down the air. So what we're assuming here is that between the Earth and the Sun that there's going to be enough unbalanced charge. Let's say the Earth has positive unbalanced charge 
the sun has negative unbalanced charge and that there will be enough unbalanced charge to create an electric field intensity strong enough that it's going to break down the atmosphere of the earth and you'll be seeing lightning bolts occurring everywhere discharges uh, throughout the atmosphere because the electric field is strong enough to rip the electrons off the atoms in the uh, atmosphere uh, making up oxygen nitrogen and causing the air these molecules uh, in the atoms in the air to ionize and create the arcing. Now we don't see that. We know that sort of electric field doesn't exist because we're not seeing that constantly breaking down the atmosphere continuously. But this gives us a, a large value that we can use to kind of get a bounds on thing. So I am assuming that the electric field is strong enough between the Earth and the Sun is to break down the Earth's atmosphere. And that value at sea level is the electric field to break down air is 75,000 volts or 75 kilovolts per inch. And in metric units, that's 2.952 megavolts per meter. That is the intensity that the electric field needs to be to break down the air and cause discharge and lightning at sea level. Now, given this value, we can compute the voltage between the surface of the Earth and the surface of the uh, Sun because there's a relationship that electric field is the voltage between any two points divided by the distance between those two points. Like if you have a plate on a two parallel plate capacitors, the electric field in there. Uh, if you have an unbalanced charge, say Q on that plate, minus Q on this plate, and a voltage potential difference, V, and a plate separation of D, the electric field is just the voltage of separation of plates divided by the plate separation. We have the same thing here. In this case, our plates in the capacitor are spheres rather than parallel plates, but we can still have charge separation where we have positive charge on the Earth, negative on the uh, Sun, or vice versa, and a distance between them. So we have a potential that's going to develop that has to be present between the Earth and the Sun such that that potential divided by the distance between them gives us the electric field along the axial line of uh, the Earth and the Sun. And it's of this value. So putting in our numbers, we can solve for the voltage. Voltage is equal to the electric field intensity times D. Well, the electric field intensity is 2.952 times 10 to the 6 volts per meter. That's 2.952 megavolts per meter, million volts, times the distance. Well, the distance is the astronomical unit, 1.49.6 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. Or, in terms of meters, it's 1.4 or 149.6 billion meters, 10 to the 9. Multiplying this through, we get 4.4162 times 10 to the 17th volts. That has, it will be the voltage that potential difference between the Earth and the Sun when there's enough charge separation between them to cause an electric field to develop of this intensity which would be breaking down the air. So we have to have 4.4 times 10 to the 17th volts. A huge number a huge potential difference between the uh, Sun and the Earth. Now, 
Let's compute now the amount of unbalanced charge that needs to exist to create this potential difference. So we're going to have a plus Q here and a minus Q here. We need to compute what that unbalanced charge is to create this potential difference that would be producing that electric field. Well, in any capacitive structure, charge is capacitance times voltage. By definition, capacitance in electromagnetic theory, if you're going to compute the capacitance, you compute the amount of charge on the plate and divide by the voltage between the plates. That's the definition of capacitance. So just transposing the charge on the capacitor plates is capacitance times voltage. Now put in our numbers. For C, we have 708.9 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. And our voltage is 4.416 times 10 to the 17th volts. And that works out to 3.13 times 10 to the 14th coulombs of unbalanced charge. So that's the amount of unbalanced charge that must reside on the surface of both the Earth and the Sun in order to create this potential difference that creates that electric field that will break down the atmosphere. Now, given that we have the amount of unbalanced charge, we can now compute the electrostatic force between the two spheres, between the Earth and the Sun. And we do that using Coulomb's force law. That the force due to electric field is 1 over 4 pi E0, which is the permittivity of free space, since the charge is the same on both, it's Q over D squared. Normally this is written as Q1, Q2 over 4 pi E0 D squared, but the charge between the two on, on both of the spheres is the same because the charge separation to produce this potential difference. Now, we put in our numbers. So, we have 3.13 times 10 to the 14th, divided by D, which is 149.6 times 10 to the 9th meters. we got to put it in meters, the distance in meters. That is squared, and 1 over uh, or 4 pi E0 is 1.13 or 1.113 times 10 to the minus 10th farads per meter. When we make this product, compute this out, and we get a force of 3.94 times 10 to the 16th newtons of force, of electrostatic force that exists between the Earth and the Sun. That is how much force exists between them when we have this amount of free charge residing on the surfaces. Now, that is the force. That's the binding force to hold the Earth in orbit about the Sun, if indeed the force responsible for it is electrostatic and that's the electrostatic force that is strong enough to just be starting to break down the Earth's atmosphere. Now let's compute the standard force that we know exists between the Earth and the Sun due to the masses of these objects and that's given by Newton's gravitational force law that this is the universal gravitational constant times the mass of the Sun, mass of the Earth, over the center to center distance squared. Put in the numbers. We have 6.672 times 10 to the minus 11th 
for big G. Mass of the sun is 5.979 times 10 to the 24th. No, that's the uh, mass of the earth. I'm sorry. That's just, uh, well, I'll rewrite that so it makes sense. Mass of the sun is 1.991 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. And the mass of the earth is 5.979 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And the distance of separation squared is 1.496 times 10 to the 9th meters. And we're going to square that. So if you have a calculator, you calculate that thing out. The force due to uh, gravitational force of attraction due to the masses of the Earth and the Sun is this amount. 3.55 roughly times 10 to the 22nd newtons. Well, let's com compare the electrostatic force to the gravitational force in this case. We know this gravitational force exists using Newton's gravitational theory. Now, let's complete what we have here. Let's compare the gravitational force to the electrostatic force. Gravitational force is 3.549 times 10 to the 22nd newtons. And the force due to the electrostatic charge separation is 3.94 times 10 to the 16th. And if we perform that division, it's 901,700. So, the force of gravity that exists between, the gravitational force that exists between the Sun and the Earth is 901,000 times larger than the electrostatic force that needs to exist to try to hold the Earth and the Sun together. And we are, the electrostatic force isn't going to be any larger than this because if it were, the atmosphere would be constantly breaking down, which it isn't. We don't see the atmosphere breaking down. There aren't lightning bolts occurring all the time. So, at the largest that the electric field could be, the electrostatic forces, binding forces to hold the Earth to the Sun, is almost a million times less, 901,000 times less than that of the gravitational force. So it's weak, weaker by almost six orders of magnitude. So there's no way there's any electrostatic forces that's going to hold the Earth to the Sun because in order to do so, to hold the Earth, Earth in orbit, the electric static force of attraction has to equal the gravitational force of attraction, but it's weaker by six orders of magnitude. So it is bollocks. There uh, is no basis behind this uh, electric universe which is could be responsible for holding the Earth in orbit about the Sun.